Well, Rich, here we are then. Episode eight. Can't believe it yet again. We're still going. Um, <laughs> nine weeks from starting this. No, 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 I haven't. No, in fact, I'm waiting for that call for us to uh, be on, you know, on Five Live every week doing our podcast, you know, taking over from, uh, from whoever's, uh, whoever's on holiday for the week. What about that? Though? Well, that good well, at that, me? yeah, rather interesting. A uh, little Dickie Bird tells me that you, in fact, were on Five Live uh, only the other morning. I, I, not I obviously was. not to tell too many people about that. No, 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 I, I was on Five Live. Yeah, they were asking my opinion about what it's like to run a business during the pandemic. So Ooh. a bit like what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, I had a little chat with Nikki. Ooh. Anyway. They are a TM group, uh, an IT team who work with, and this is, this is the sort of the next step beyond last week, our last episode when we were talking to the legal sector. So they, so presumably they, they are a business to business provider. So it'd be really interesting to see what she says. Let, let's hear what she's got to say. Fantastic. Here we go. Good afternoon. So I'm Jane Towner. I'm the customer experience director for TM Group. We're an IT company based in Swindon and we provide services to conveyancing solicitors. So property information, all available online and supported by our fantastic customer service team. Fantastic, fantastic. So in terms of the sector that you've sort of been working with, there's been quite a turbulent time recently uh, for, 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 for the whole area. Um, and uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been speaking to other people from other sectors and, and asking them, you know, how how easy or how difficult or what have you had to consider when it came to planning for things to open up again as as this lockdown is sort of lifting what what, what have been the challenging challenges from a customer experience point of view for you over the last few weeks well the the, the biggest challenge for us in in where we sit in the property market so we work with conveyances uh, both residential and on on commercial property and obviously since the end of march um, the government has been strongly dissuading people to move forward with any property transactions. Um, and whilst it's fantastic news that the market has reopened, as you can imagine, between a property going on the market, somebody making an offer, and our clients getting an instruction to start work on the conveyance, there's often a lag. So one of the biggest challenges for us in on the service side of our business is to work out what type of support people are going to need and at what point. Um, although the markets are open and there's a lot of activity, that's not translating through into transactions that are moving through. So one of the uh, things we've been focusing on over the last week or so is trying to work out how we can build in the flex to be ready when we start seeing activity from our client base and make sure as we come out of this, we're offering people the level of service that then they expect it's interesting you mentioned that that certainty piece it's something that we yeah. generally have you know talking quite a bit about actually and 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 how it's impacted by um customers confidence levels um across multiple sectors have, have you seen you, you mentioned that it's been taking you know since it's reopened not everybody's gone away hey, let's go and buy a house um <laughs> and therefore you haven't had to supply, to supply so much of your services as it were has yeah. that confidence level have you seen a change in that over the last couple of weeks or is it still very much we're not 100 percent sure because we don't feel it's right I, I still think there's a lot of uncertainty particularly on uh, uh, particularly on the commercial side of this on, on the business side of this so yeah. so there's different layers isn't there for, for consumers if you're driving you know for in our world if you want to move a house i've already as i've already established you know that there there's a very clear emotive driver to, to do that mm -hmm. um, for our customers, um, I mean, a lot of the law firms that we work with are not huge businesses. You know, mm -hmm. the company I work for is, is 180 people. Um, as with many law firms in our sector, we are reliant on orders coming in through the front end in order to manage our costs. So mm -hmm. um, what's interesting at the moment is there's, I think, a lot of uncertainty with our customer base because what they're focusing on is trying to manage their costs people being furloughed have we got the right number of people yes. um but then uh, and that's uh, muddying the water i suppose I, I would say between what we're seeing out in the public you know what the consumers are, are feeling i would say we've seen a slow build in confidence but, but it's still we still have the distraction of just coming out of lockdown and uh, you know for a lot of businesses making sure 
quite simply the maths is working um, and that is colouring what, what we see um, coming through from consumers it's quite different difficult to differentiate the two things isn't it yeah yeah sure I, I think it's that sort of I was speaking about it at the beginning of the whole thing you know it's almost as if people are saying oh you know cor coronavirus has killed all the money it hasn't hasn't killed all the money or the business out there it's just slowed it all down and it's being held isn't it in those own yeah. in our own bubbles so well actually we're not sure yet so that confidence is starting to return and i think you know people are starting to then release a little bit more of it as it as it comes through it's interesting you mentioned the communication piece there as well actually from the sort of the media and the press press side of things so clearly you're doing some thinking about and planning in place for when the confidence levels are starting to rise how are you then communicating with your customers about the offering and what you know and what's happening is that a regular piece or have you had to adjust how you communicate with your customers we we've we've adjusted how we work so um we are still doing all the usual things so we're getting out you, you know got newsletters for different audiences in our business we um, do regular updates on things, you know, as orders go in and out on an individual basis. But but um, when we, as we went into lockdown, uh, we made the decision to put the emphasis more on our account managers and sales team. So rather than rely on the uh, distance of email, uh, we're all socially distancing enough, aren't we? There's there's enough limits. We we took the decision to try and do much more with our account management team who of course are at home and available for virtual coffees um, so we've used that to gauge how our customers are feeling so we're talking we're talking to our customers on a regular basis and not just the usual people we talk to um, our, our more senior contact but the people who are actually using the platform um, and actually what we're now going through over the next few weeks is looking at um, we want to keep some of that we want to keep that personal contact but if we move back into normal business what is it we need to be telling people about um, how things are working? So I think the emphasis is going to go back to more regular email communication, um, perhaps relying more on the old customer satisfaction service. We haven't been doing that because it felt a bit impersonal. Um, but it, it's getting that balance between trying to keep that relationship, trying to keep you know engaging with our customers because we feel in the circumstance that's the best way of doing it, face or virtually face to face but then giving them that steady stream of information. Um, and it's interesting, one of the things that's worked really well for us is we've, uh, we deal with you know, hundreds of different suppliers across the country. So lots and lots of information that we need to provide to our customers about what's happening with their orders. Um, so we did a very simple thing. We put a blog up um, with lots of information. It's refreshed every day and we're pointing people there. And, and the next phase for us is, go, is relaunching the blog because it's been there for a while and, and giving them information about how we're coming out of lockdown to support right. what our account managers are doing and, and email. So it's, it's making, trying to get the balance between giving people enough information, but it, it's available at the right time. Great point. I think, you know, a, a lot of organisations get, again, we talk about this bubble, get caught up in your own bubble and this is what we do and therefore we need to get as much information out. And we talk a lot about the need to communicate. Absolutely. You've got to keep people mm. uh, or give them the option to hear about what's available. But when you are in a position where you're pushing content too much, you know, how how does that land with with customers or potential clients even um, whilst this is this is going on? Uh, it's, it's, it's almost a longer term game in terms of not wanting to put people off to a certain degree. Is, it, is that something that you, you find? Absolutely. And, and I think we can all perhaps because we've all been uh, at home more and, and looking at our personal emails more, our work emails. I mean, I've certainly noticed there are a few organisations who I feel have been sending me a lot of information. Uh, and, and not all of it is relevant and, and some of it is unnecessary uh, and so so you then start filtering it don't you then not you're not looking at, at what's coming through so we we have tried uh, it, we have tried to strike that balance between highlighting things perhaps you know services that we offer that people might not be aware of but but doing it in a measured way, try and targeting it and, and preferably going through our sales team in the first instance. So they've got a personal contact rather than rather than email. But as I say, as the world comes back to normal and our client base grows and the number of people using our platform grows, you lose that ability to have that regular contact. So it's it's looking at how we how we do that moving forward. And you know, you have to try and see the positives in these things. Certainly the message and the way we've approached this internally is, you know, there's a lot of challenges that we've had to overcome, but actually 
how often in, in, in life do you get an opportunity to really look at a blank sheet of paper and say, okay, so if we wanted to start again, I mean, we've been in business for 20, over 20 years. So, you know, we've got a lot of processes that we've always done because that's the way we've done. It, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to just have a bit of a rethink about how are we communicating and are we doing it in the right way? Um, and as you said before, most importantly, is it what our customers want to know? Um, mm -hmm. Are we giving them the right information at the right time, rather than you know, as I said, I've, I've, there's a few, there's a few more that have gone on my ignore list um, over the last few weeks because I'm conscious of how much information I don't need to see from them. A number of um, uh, organisations are, are are going more to the in, the immediate messaging piece, so yeah. that's it, making it easier for the customer, so they can get that data a lot quicker. You know, email could sit in your inbox for three or four days. Whereas an instant messaging, it, it's it's changing the the way the way it interacts. So yeah, and that certainly. I mean, I, I think you know certainly it, it's not in our business. It's not something we use at the moment because of the type of information that, that's required. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, but I think it's you, you're absolutely right. It's a similar trend. You know, five five six years ago, a lot of the contact we got with telephone calls. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it moved very very quickly over two to three years to being you know, 90% of what we're dealing with comes in on email, you know, so, uh, again, lawyers, it's very traditional, uh, it's yep. down, but, but certainly we can now see, well, it's two things, it's getting access to uh, live information, uh, and that there's two ways you can do that, you can use the chat services, or mm -hmm. um, certainly one of the things we're looking at is, how do we enrich um, our online presence, how do we include more information that the customer will need that they can access when it's relevant to them. Because the other thing that we've seen in recent weeks is of course, now we're all working from home. It's not the nine to five. It's the, when I can fit it around my homeschooling and yeah. when my, when my vendor is available, when my, you know, so, so, and I think, um, you know, there's been lots of really big statements about the world is going to change and everyone's going to be remote working. And, and I think this is a, it's a real opportunity. And I think there will be a difference, uh, a big difference in, in the way that we work. And, and as a business, look, thinking about what our customers need, just as we're looking to give our employees more flexibility as we come out of lockdown, as we continue to do more re remote working, as the schools are or aren't open, whatever else is happening, all of that applies to our the people who use us, our clients. So um, I think I think you're right. Email email is um, a, a blunt instrument, and it's I think we're coming out of the other side of it. It's it's not easy to use. It, it's yeah. much better to have that ready access to information yeah. Yeah. Um, to, yeah. through a platform. And, and there's again an opportunity. You know, there's not many times when you're painful is, is to look at your order pipeline is at, at a point where you can actually invest some of the time in changing your processes because you don't have the volume of orders that you normally do going through the system you know again mm -hmm. it's it, but it's moving quickly enough to be able to be able to react to that when you know as a business you are trying to be conservative and control your costs and make sure that you're focusing on service delivery for, for, for your clients you know particularly as i said for us in, in the property market mm -hmm. where you know there's going to be a lot of focus on how quickly things can or can't be done. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, so f finally, obviously, you mentioned you sort of coming through this and planning for. How, how do you know when you've when you've done the when you've done a good job? What, what are the sort of the uh, the measurements or the way the way you sort of you um, you check that everything is is has, has been working as you would like it to? What what are the measures? So um, it really depends. So I, I've, in the last few weeks, as I've mentioned, the honest answer is we've been, you know, hitting the phones and finding out what people are thinking because we've got the, the ability to. I mean, there's there's lots of, um, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? I, I, you you should follow your business metrics. You should have a series of measures that you follow. But but I also still think, particularly in our industry, that personal gauge, that understanding and, and talking to your customers and getting a feel for the sentiment. Um, because, you know, yes, there are very clear things you can measure in terms of how you're performing and, you know, it seems to how often a client is having to come to you. I mean, that's certainly one of the ones that um, we're looking at in our business. So can we improve their overall experience by uh, reducing the number of times they have to ask us a question? Because we've already told them before they need to know and all that sort of thing. Um, but as I say, I think there isn't real opportunity to start engaging people. Um, it, it's difficult to do at, 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 um, it, it, in a, on a grand scale. Um, but I think if you if you use uh, focus groups, user groups, get the right type of people around who are representative of your customer base, and and just get that 
um, inst the sentiment I think as I said before is, is the right way of putting it so you know that's what we try to get a balance between the metrics the numbers that we're looking at customer satisfaction surveys but also talking to your clients and understand what's going on in their worlds um, right. Thank you ever so much for, for your insight today. It's really <laughs> great to hear about it from, uh, from a, a customer experience uh, specialist uh, within another <laughs> sector, Jane. So thank you ever so much and uh, have a great rest of the day. So there we go. That, that was James, James Warblins with me. But really interesting stuff. What did you, what did you, what did you think, Ryan? Yeah, do, do you know what? It was fascinating listening to... Um, an individual who's inside an organization focusing on customer experience and getting a very different perspective on you know how she saw the importance and and at what time she thought it was appropriate to interact with her clients so how to interact what they were doing so she she talked about didn't she um about the internal conversation about them being more flexible with with their customers and um, having to deliver for, for their clients with, with less cost um, and, and making sure that there was still that you know really important customer sentiment in the organization so it was I thought you know it was fascinating um, and, and, and also I thought what was what was really interesting was looking at it from a perspective of a business to business environment um, and a lot of our warblings have been about very much business to the consumer haven't they so <laughs> them yeah. thinking about how they interacted with their with their business to business clients i thought was was really interesting what, what was your re re reflection yeah yeah I, th I think it was that um realization that um you know people's expectations were changing the communication avenues were very much changing and how they how they needed to be very uh, cognizant of, of of people's feelings, which is which is which is a great view um, and something to really understand for, from that. Um, and I think it's just that that need to spend time. Clearly, TM Group have a customer experience professional on board. They, you know, they're one of these organisations that see that as a really important thing to do. Now, of course, not all organisations can do that, not all set up to do that. Um, Hello, that's where we come in. But um, you know, it's great to be able to make sure that uh, you you pause, think, and and plan. As we've said over the last couple of days, plan these these things. It doesn't just happen. You've got to stop and reflect about the situation, and then you've got to review what you've done, and then you've got to you know um, revise where you're going, as as we've we've said previously. So I, it was really interesting to hear that. But, but you so it what? looks like you've got a point to make. Well, you've just triggered something in my memory. Steady. You know, we, we, and, that, and that takes a lot to do because, you know, my memory's not good as you get older. Um, when you drink too much cider, it's definitely not good. Um, but the, one of the things that I noticed and I was curious about was when she started to talk about how, uh, how suppliers to TM Group had interacted with her um and how they would chosen to interact and she talked about the medium of email didn't she and she talked about well, you asked about the medium of, of email and she talked at, um, at length didn't she about actually i find email as an annoy i think she used the word uh, i found it an annoyance and actually the more annoyance i had and, and and i wrote it down she put i put those particular businesses um on my ignore list and i thought what a great insight to someone in a senior position in an organization like TM Group, who, who I'm sure have got, you know, clients and, and suppliers chatting to them all the time. And she will be able to see the difference of engagement, particularly at a time like this, when, you know, people are, are kind of like, they're, they're, they're nervous about contacting customers and clients, aren't they? They're nervous about having those conversations. And, and the comment for me that, that's, you know, sp sparked a thousand, how to books was just pick up the phone and talk to me ring me speak to me like a human don't send me an email with you know with with fancy lines in or you know fancy catchy uh uh catchy sentiment talk to me talk to me as an individual find out what i need from you at the moment and then she spun that on its head and she was encouraging her team to do the same and why i think that's really important is we, we talked about this uh, a couple of episodes ago around um, how to interact with your clients during the pan pandemic 
And I think our top tip at that point, Rich, was all about pick up the phone, mm-hmm. ask how they are, see if they need any help, mm. understand their world. And, you know, that, that was to, to, uh, to ascertain whether or not you could help. But actually, when we come out of this, I think one of the biggest learns that organisations and businesses will have is to really rethink the way in which they choose to communicate with, uh, with prospective clients, but also their existing client base and, 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 and make the effort. Don't hide behind an email. Uh, it's you yeah. again next week. Who are you talking to you next week then? Me again. I'm chatting to a gentleman called Dave Hancock who uh, from Salisbury who runs uh, three establishments and so clearly they are under the cosh at the moment. But Dave's got some really great and interesting views which uh, we'll hear about um, next week in episode eight. Uh, so uh, please do tune episode in for nine. that. Episode nine. This is eight, Rich. <laughs> oh my God. Nine. Yeah. I've made a right cock up of that, haven't I? Yeah, you've been on the cider, I think. Well, I need more. Anyway, I've been Richard Knight from the West Country. Ryan Huxtable, thank you very much and see you soon.